Baba, Manto Vetabelate. This is everybody's day. This is everybody's day. Whosoever. There are opportunities in the now that you can maximize. That's why we don't rush into prayer. The first labor in prayer is to occasion a window in the spirit so that you can peep and find out what the emphasis of the spirit is. True prayer is the emphasis of the spirit. God has a generalized will, but the emphasis of the spirit brings to you his will in the now. And so this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask according to his will, not just the general one, but the now one. Because Jesus was not praying into a general will. He was discerning every season. I know that I will need a prayer in gratitude to occasion the anointing to call forth a dead man. But I'm not going to do it when he's sick. I know God can heal every day, but I know that I know God can heal every day, but not every day is a day of healing. So I'm not going to live where I am and I'm not going to pray. I'm going to wait till they say that he's dead and I'm going to tell them that his death is, was not intended. And when I get to his tomb, I will thank God for the privilege of every day hearing. What does that mean to you? Father, Thank you because you hear me always. So why didn't you pray four days ago? If he had prayed four days ago, his prayer meant that God will have heard him. So why did he not pray? It means always with Jesus. He's not always with you. He's always. He's not Kronos. He's always. He's Kairos. I know when to pray. And I know when not to pray. I know when to, I know what to pray for and what not to pray for. Because you don't have knowledge at his level, so you were given the spirit. Likewise, the spirit help it our infirmities. So that gap between you and Jesus in the mastery of prayer has been accounted for in the revelatory ministry of the Holy Spirit. But when you come to prayer, you, when you acknowledge it, a window is created. So even though I need a second car, I don't pray about it every day. I've only asked God once for it. Lord, I need a car. I need a house of my own. And the response he gave me was instant. I have heard you. Most prayers are heard. What else should you do? Live your life. Could it be that for the things that matter for the now, because you have not leveraged on that revealing ministry of the Holy Spirit, you have not been able to ask accurately? I'm building into the, my emphasis because one of the things God is saying to me, there's the growth thing, and the growth for me is a louder emphasis as a ministry, is that there is... In God, an agenda for existence by power. And because we have peeped through the window, we have seen what he says or what he said. We have also been privileged to see what will happen as a result of that reception what we now come to do is to bring people into prayers that now you can ask him. How many of you have heard me use that word before? That God is doing something, now you can ask him. It's not like he was not potent the last minute. But now a window has opened to show that this is the season. Ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter reign. I hope you know that God can make it rain every day. Because he, he, he manipulates the seasons. But there is an allocated time. And until that allocated time is known, don't ask, it will not fall. Ah. So there is a demand upon us as a house. And everyone must begin to press in prayer for a life that demonstrates the power of God. 
We will study the word. We will teach the word. And I trust Jesus that our lives will advertise the accuracy of the ministry of the word. But existence by power is no longer something that we can put aside. And I do not talk of power as a currency by which we just excite ourselves. Let me give you a verse of scripture, then I'll try to tie it up. I can't preach that whole thing here. So I'll wait for another time. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It was a verse of scripture I used yesterday. But let me borrow some wisdom there. Use two other verses and then bring us into prayer. I want us to start praying in about 15 to 20 minutes so that we can go to the other side. Huh, Jesus, help me. help me. For we are God's workmanship. One of the things that strengthens for reality in a spirit atmosphere is the consciousness of your identity. A time must come in your work with God. A time must come in your natural existence, which is actually factored into your work with God. Because when you got saved, you were not raptured. When you got saved, you were gifted the privilege to sustain your natural existence. Am I? So, some of you have been saved for three, four years, and you are still having natural bad days. It means your natural existence now is supposed to be lived out supernaturally. That's the only difference. Are you with me? So, I'm, a, I'm retreating that your natural existence is factored into your life in the spirit. It's actually like a subset of it. You need to come to a place in that your existence when you can boldly declare from God's perspective what you are, not who you are. I know that your name is Maiwa. Your name is, pardon me to just call your name. Your name is Adiola. Abi? Okay, your name is Pastor Adiola. Abi? Your name is Adiola. But you must know more than your name. Your name advertises to us who you are. You still have an identity in God. So on Friday I was saying that we don't say who is a minister of Christ. We say what is a minister of Christ. Because when you are disconnected from headquarters, you are no longer a minister of Christ. You can still wear, wear a collar. Ministry begins as a reception. We receive it. That's why we can give it. If you are disconnected to a point that you are no longer receiving, then it means that whatever you are doing, you are just acting. You are no longer a minister. So you can start in the morning as a minister of Christ, and in the evening you are no longer his minister. Because if you work in, Mr. in Chicken Republic, right, as a waiter, when you resign, it will be evil for us to call you waiter. You can no longer occasion food. If we give you money, sometimes they even do what they call a disclaimer. And it's because the average person in church cannot read the writings of the Spirit that many faces that people still subscribe to have attracted a disclaimer in the Spirit that if you deal with this person, he's at your own risk. <laughs> uh, if you keep listening to this voice, it's no longer transmitting from heaven. Any transaction that you have with him can no longer be traceable to us. He can tell you things that are true about your existence, but he operates in clairvoyancy. You know what clairvoyancy means? Clear vision. It means if he looks at your life, he will not make a mistake, but it's by an evil spirit. So if he says 0246752121, you say yes, 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 yes. Say, I'm not saying that true prophets cannot operate like that. True prophets do that too. Because sometimes God wants to bring you a point of consciousness. I know you. Are you with me? See, and there's a glow. There's a, there's still an MTM. So he gives you the other glow and gives you the other MTM. Say, even yesterday, you ate rice. And the name of the fish 
was tilapia. You even had a bone that hung on your teeth about 3 or 2 in the afternoon. And you needed a, what do they call that thing? A floss to remove it. And the floss was not successful. So you had to physically pull it out by your hand. Because sites by clairvoyancy don't miss their targets. It actually means clear vision. Somebody can be like that who started as a true prophet. But in the day that he breaks fellowship with headquarters, he is caught up from the supply of heaven. So he's no longer receiving from God. So we can still put prophet in front of his name, but he's no longer a prophet. If an apostle goes a wall, away on French leave, that he no longer has contact with heaven, you can still put apostle in front of his name. He could as well change his first name to apostle. But the realities as of God in the apostolic will no longer be seen in him. So it can no longer be used as a definition for that spiritual office. You must know what you are. And Paul introducing to us said that we are God's workmanship. I said to my wife, that's a major boast. Um, do you do any crafts? Jane, you are really looking fresh for a wedding. <laughs> God help us. There's no craft that you do. Who does some handcraft here? Okay. So I know you cook. And I see you have gone the way of a flyer now, so we should start eating. Do you do shawarma? Okay, you know how to do it. As in shawarma. Not shawarma. Okay. What can you not cook? You said, what, is there any food you cannot cook? Help me, help me, help me. Okay, I found so. So if Pastor Dola begins to, you serve the East now, and begins to desire Afang soup, Afang soup. He now tells Pastor Yomi that there's a soup called Afang soup. And our soups here are not complex. It's just cut, mix, and eat. Afang comes and it's a condiment. May God show you mercy. If an illiterate in the preparation, an uneducated person, uh, and the, the, word is, the, the English word is ignoramus, decides to prepare afang soup for you, your end has been predicted. <laughs> you can escape with okra, not with afang. So because you press your heart, say, ah, maybe you can cook, just cook it. When she cooks it, and then you become a specimen of a chemist, what we will say about you is that you are, you are her workmanship. It means that what your life is advertising is an attestation to how skillful she is in producing afang soup. Because I know that you use flagil. I know that you, you, may be, you may be advised to go and be, be eating raw gari or eat bread. Paul is saying, look at us. And it was not an individual reality. Look into our company. We are his workmanship. Our lives advertise the best of God's skillfulness. What he was saying was God cannot produce anything better than what we have become. <laughs> That's a very big claim. A, a, a bold one. What he had in mind originally, void of errors of production, that's who we are. So that people's doubts could be cleared, Paul now said, we were created in Christ Jesus. In case you feel that our lives don't advertise the perfection of God's work, we will advertise to you our prototype. Check Jesus, check us. Can I announce to you the desire of God is that every one of us can make this statement. If we sustain our journey, that one day you will stand and when you look at your Lord, there is no difference between the one that's sanctified and the one that is sanctified. Because the Bible says that they are of the same kind. 
That's what God is producing. We were created in Christ Jesus unto good works. 